Hey, welcome back to Theta. In this video, we're going to go over how to determine when to mask and we'll actually mask some air conduction thresholds. Let's get into it. I've gone ahead and designed this audiogram in Theta and I've pre-filled in all of the unmasked thresholds. There's a neat little setting that allows you to automatically generate the unmasked thresholds so you can focus on learning when to mask and how to mask without having to fill in the unmasked thresholds all the time. Watch the video linked below for more information on how to use that setting. Okay, so here we go. We've got our right ear which has a sloping hearing loss and our left ear that has a flat, normal hearing looking audiogram. Let's check out air conduction first and decide if we need to mask. I should add in this video, we're doing everything using TDH50 headphones, which is a super aural transducer. So we're gonna use a default interaural attenuation of 40 dB and occlusion effect values of 10 dB at 1000, 20 dB at 500, and 20 dB at 250 Hertz. If you wanna learn more about interaural attenuation, cross hearing, and the occlusion effect, check out the videos linked below for more information on those topics. Let's go for it now. So we'll start at 250 Hertz, and we're gonna be comparing the worse hearing ear, the right ear, to the better hearing ear, the left ear. If there is a chance that the sound is loud enough in the right ear to be heard by the left ear, then we're gonna be concerned that our threshold may not actually be correct, and we would need to mask. When we have a low threshold, it's very unlikely that masking is gonna be required. When we have low thresholds and symmetrical hearing, it's very unlikely that we'll need to mask. So let's look at some of these thresholds where there's hearing loss in the right ear. We'll start at 2000 Hertz. If you look at 2000 Hertz, the threshold that we found without masking was 35 dBHL. Remember that a 35 dBHL sound in the right ear will lose about 40 dB as it crosses through the skull and is heard by bone conduction in the non-test ear. That means a 35 dB HL sound in the right ear is going to cross over to the left ear and be heard in the left ear at negative 5 dB HL by bone conduction. Is negative 5 dB HL audible by bone conduction if the threshold isn't even until the sound gets to 5? No. So we're not concerned about cross hearing. There's no way that the listener was responding to the sound being heard by bone conduction in the non-test ear. So we don't need to mask. Let's look at 3000 Hertz. At 3000 Hertz, our threshold was 45 dBHL. And a 45 dBHL sound is going to lose 40 dB as it crosses over to the non-test ear, and it will be heard at 5 dB. So is 5 dB above or below the threshold of hearing by bone conduction in the non-test ear? It, the bone conduction threshold is 15. So if you can just barely hear a 15 dB sound, it's unlikely that you're gonna hear the crossed over 5 dB signal in the non-test ear. So we don't need to mask there either. But let's take a look at 4K. At 4000 Hertz, we have a stimulus level of 50, and it's gonna lose 40 dB of energy as it crosses through the skull and stimulates the left ear by bone conduction at 10. So when we found this threshold without masking, we played a 50 dB HL sound, but that sound lost 40 dB of energy and was heard by bone conduction in the non-test ear at a level of 10 dB HL. The threshold of hearing is 10 dB in that ear. So the sound, the crossed over sound and the threshold are at the same level. So it's possible that that crossed over sound was heard by the non-test ear. So in that case, we're gonna to need to mask for air conduction to cover up that non-test ear and make sure that the response that we got in the test ear was true. So let's do that. We'll turn on our masker and remember that, remember that our starting masking level is the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear plus a 10 dB safety pad. We'll present our stimulus and we get no response. When you get no response, you raise your stimulus by 5 dB until you get a response. Once you get a response, you raise the masker and we got a second response. So we raise our masker. We now have a third response after raising the masker twice. You can continue to do this and continue raising the masker to ensure and help you feel confident that the non-test ear isn't responding. This helps me feel more confident that I'm at the mask threshold in the test ear. So I'll save this as a mask right threshold. When you do the same comparison at 6,000 and 8,000, we don't have the bone conduction thresholds to compare to. So we're going to make a comparison from air to air. 
Looking at 6000 Hz, a 50 dB sound would lose 40 dB as it crosses over to the non-test ear and be present at 10. We have a threshold at 10 and we're assuming that their bone and air hearing is similar in the non-test ear. So it's possible that that 10 dB crossed over sound could have been heard by the left ear and so our response in the right ear might not be actually coming from the right ear. It might be coming from the crossed over sound to the left ear. So we need to mask. We'll turn on our masker and set the level to the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear plus a 10 dB safety pad. We'll present our stimulus and we get a response. So we'll raise the masker, response, raise the masker, and we got three responses, so we'll go ahead and save this as our mass threshold. In this case, our unmasked threshold was the same as our mass threshold, but the difference is we can feel more confident that the non-test year wasn't involved at all during this testing, and our reporting of our results is more accurate. We'll do the same thing for 8,000 Hertz. A 55 dBHL sound would lose 40 dB of energy as it crosses over and be heard in the non-test year at 15. 15 is also the threshold in that ear, so it's possible that this that our right ear threshold was found because the crossed over sound was heard by the great hearing in the left ear. So we need to mask. Turn on our masker and set the level to the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear and add a 10 dB safety pad. Then we'll present. We got a response, so we'll raise the masker. And a response, so we'll raise the masker. Three responses and we'll save. Check with your supervisor. Some people prefer to have four, save, uh, four responses before they save a threshold, and that will be up to your individual location and preference. And that's it for air conduction masking. We'll do another case with bone conduction that includes masking and highlights principles associated with bone conduction masking. Hopefully these videos help. Let us know if there's something that you'd like to see.